What's that? Yeah, I know. At least it's sunny. Okay, boys, happy days. I finally managed to get my paws on the uh, applicable manual for my vehicle. Uh, finding the 2.4 liter four cylinder version of the uh, Suzuki Grand Vitara is uh, no, no small feat, uh, I can tell you. I think the British cracked the Enigma code quicker than I was able to get a hold of this manual. Okay, at long last, I'm out of the car and uh, I'm pinned out as per the um, effective wiring diagram. Oh, what a week I've had, boys. I smashed my, being the clumsy bastard I am, I dropped my, my laptop and pretty much destroyed it. The hinges destroyed and the displays adrift from the keyboard. It's, it is um, I've got myself a little tiny uh, notebook. Right, and um, I actually wanted a smaller screen because uh, it's a wee bit easier to manage when I've got the um, um, the V-Packer on the go inside the car. The the larger laptop, 17 inch or whatever it was, is kind of unwieldy, right? So in that regard, I'm happy to have this. Okay, boys. So uh, there's going to be quite a bit of noise here, of course, on the soundtrack because the the car is going to be running. I've got my heater on because it is absolutely freezing in my garage. You can probably hear that in the background. And it has been a bitch of a day. Uh, you might even hear my neighbor's snowblower going in the background as well. Okay, so we have the, uh, the red channel there, boys. Uh, the B channel is actually the uh, 12 volt feedback. And uh, the uh, blue line, uh, channel A, is actually the uh, control, is low side switched. So every time the, uh, the engine control module is asking to uh, up the output from the alternator, you can see the duty cycle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. In fact, now it's at zero. So I didn't actually expect this. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go up the uh, load on the, uh, on the system and we'll see if we can get the alternator kicking back in again. So there you've seen it, it was only, although it was only momentarily, uh, all I did was actually select on the um, uh, rear defroster to up the load on the system. So the headlights are on, the, the, the blower motor is on, and um, the rear defroster is on. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Although you can see now that the duty cycle on the feedback has actually gone up significantly, right? The duty cycle on the low side uh, is quite a bit wider. So let me take the load off and we'll see what actually happens. So there we go. You can see on the uh, on the feedback side of things, what appears to be going on here is that the the channel A is actually the uh, the request from the engine control module to actually up the output from the alternator. When the alternator actually matches that output of the request, the request line or the channel A disappears so so long as the load is being met by the alternator with respect to what the ECU is actually asking for there is no request there is no there is no ground side switch it's, it's not pulling that 5 volt line uh, blue line uh, to the low side so you can see the let me let me up the uh, put the headlights on again and I'll put the rear defroster and <clears throat> put the blower on high and uh, Keep an eye on the duty cycle, uh, the low side, the negative duty cycle of the uh, channel B, the red line, and uh, keep an eye on uh, the blue. I think once the red line actually matches the blue, the blue goes back to the null, the uh, the no request, if you will. I, I hope that's making sense what I'm saying here, boys. Uh, I've got a blizzard actually blowing in in my garage here, so if you see snow in front of the uh, camera, yeah, it is actually snow, snow my dandruff, although that is an issue as well.
All right, well, I didn't expect that either. Um, looks like the feedback line has gone basically to a solid uh, low. Yeah, it's still functional. I didn't expect that either. So that's pretty much, I think the alternator pretty much balls to the wall. I'm only idle here and I'm asking a lot. So perhaps that does make some sense. So let me drop the load again. I've got everything loaded up and uh, we'll see if we can make some sense of what's happening. So there you go. I guess that does make some sense. I was expecting the uh, the request or the uh, the command from the ECU to actually be there constantly. Um, the details in the manual are very sketchy, but that doesn't appear to be the case. It, that request only appears to be there so long as there's a differential between what the ECU is asking for and what the alternator is actually putting out. Right now it looks like the alternator is putting out what the system is asking for. So there is no low on the channel uh, A, on the, uh, um, on the control. So again, I'll load up the system again. I'm pretty sure you're gonna see a low on the uh, channel A, the blue line, and uh, the duty cycle should widen on the uh, channel B reflective of how much the alternator is actually putting out. Let's check that out. Did that actually happen, boys? I don't know. I, di I didn't see the blue line, but we're at max. Uh, I think we're at probably max. I've got the high beams on, I've got the blower on full, and I've got the uh, rear defroster on. Um, I think we're probably getting close to the maximum that the alternator is actually capable of putting out. And it looks like the feedback line, the red, uh, the red trace on the scope, is actually reflective of that. So let me dump the load again. So there you go. Just the uh, the basics of the the uh, the car actually running now. Of course the the uh, the fuel pump, the ignition system, all all the basics for the engine management system are there, but not much else. Um, yeah, interesting. More 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 to this than I actually anticipated. Let me uh, let me turn the car off. I'm going to turn the headlights on just to bleed the battery for a minute, and then we'll see the load. Uh, because obviously the alternator should uh, should kick in to actually replenish the battery if we deplenish it a bit. Okay, so uh, I've got the the engine is obviously switched off here, boys. So I guess you can tell by the by the audio track, um, and I've got the headlights on high uh, high beams actually on in order to de deplete the battery to some degree. Uh, I'll let I'll I'll stop you here for a minute. I'll save you the the real time grief, and then uh, we'll start the car back up. And I'm quite sure the uh, uh, the demand. Um, The blue line, the demand from the ECU should be quite wide indeed. Uh, but again, once the alternator achieves that output, um, you'll see quite a wide um, duty cycle, negative duty cycle on the red line, meaning that the alternator is actually matching the request and the blue line will actually drop back down again. None of this was explained in the manual and I wasn't expecting none of this. Um, I was hoping to do the ripple, uh, the AC ripple on the, uh, the generator output boys and actually 
scope the current output as well. I'm going to save that for yet another installment, although I'll make it a completely different uh, video series. Uh, I think this one will flog this dead horse for long enough. And um, But this is interesting. I've actually learned something here, and the manual does not explain this. Um, I think the ECU just puts a request in, so so long as the alternator is actually uh, furnishing the current for that request, um, that request actually disappears from the ECU again. That's what it certainly seems like. So let me start the car again and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> So everything is loaded up boys, the high beams are on, the uh, reader frost is on, the blower is on yet again. Um, it looks from the feedback line like we're maxed out and the request is uh, gone from the ECU. So I'm just going to drop the load and we should see a change at least on the feedback line I would think. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you boys. I wasn't expecting this from the theory of operation description in the manual. Um, I wasn't expecting this at all. It actually appears to operate quite differently from at least the impression I was under. Uh, perhaps I'm, I was the only one under that impression, but yeah. So the ECU uh, demand line, um, the ground side switching only seems to happen so long as there's a differential between the request and the actual output. Once the alternator output matches that request, it goes back to the high, which actually does kind of make some sense. At least I think it makes some sense. So that I hope, I'm hoping this will actually generate some discussion, boys, and perhaps, in fact, I'm sure there'll be guys who are a lot more familiar with this uh, than me. And uh, I'd love to hear from you from because this has been quite a quite a learning experience for me again my apologies for uh, no ac ripple and uh no actual um current clamp on the uh, alternator but it is absolutely freezing in here boys and i've frankly i've had enough and this is enough for me to chew on for the next week anyway to wrap my head around this um i want to extend my gratitude and many thanks to both um denny um the logical canuck and um jeremy at jl's auto solution um because they were both kind enough to send me some diagrams uh, um, before I got this. Okay, so tonight's musical recommendation, boys. Uh, Matthew Good, um, Canadian guy. Um, he's from uh, Western Canada, uh, BC, Coquitlam, I think. Um, fantastic musician. This guy is an absolute first-rate musician. Uh, I've seen Matthew Good a couple of times over the years. He does not disappoint. Um, he's, he's a deep, deep thinker, um, and his music is um, not for the faint of heart. It's, uh, some of the themes are actually quite dark. Um, this record here, In a Coma, fantastic uh, audio of being. Last of the Ghetto Astronauts, uh, one of his earlier records. Um, but if you are interested in checking him out, this one here, Underdogs. Is probably um, for a first time Matthew Good listen. Uh, it won't disappoint. He's fantastic.